This is DW News coming to you live from Berlin. As votes in the U.S. election continue to be counted, the president conjures up a conspiracy. Donald Trump makes a series of baseless claims insisting he won and is being robbed of re-election. DW News picks through his allegations which attack the foundations of the U.S. democratic process. Meanwhile, Trump's challenger, Joe Biden, inches closer to the White House with counting of postal votes favoring his Democratic Party. Biden asks an anxious U.S. population to remain patient. Hello, I'm Terry Martin. Good to have you with us. Facing growing likelihood of defeat in the U.S. presidential election, Donald Trump has again claimed without evidence that he won and that Democrats are trying to steal the election from him. In fact, Trump is losing ground as counting continues in four swing states that remain undecided. Let's take a look at some of the latest figures. They show that Biden, show Biden with 264 and President Trump with 214 uh, electoral college votes. Uh, you've got to have 270, of course, to win. And now let's take a look at some of the states. In Georgia, where 16 electoral votes are up for grabs, it's an extremely tight race. Biden and Trump are still neck and neck there with 99 percent of votes counted. The latest count has shown the former vice president has less than 2,000 votes behind the president and is catching up fast. Pennsylvania is the biggest yet to be decided with 20 electoral votes there. Donald Trump currently holds a narrow lead, but that gap is constantly narrowing and the remaining mail-in ballots are expected to favor Joe Biden. Well, Let's look at Arizona. Uh, votes there are still being counted to the AP News Agency, which is our main source of election data, has called that for Biden. But most other media outlets have not called it yet. Eleven electoral college votes are at stake there, uh, which we're including in Biden's count. But again, that could change. Joe Biden currently has a slim lead in Nevada. The state carries the six votes that he needs to win, assuming he also gets Arizona. Well, there's still around 190,000 votes left to count there in Nevada, with most in those in Democratic favored areas. So with votes still being tallied, Donald Trump's path to victory is looking increasingly difficult. Uh, Look at that big map. States in red or blue have been called by AP for Trump or Biden. They're already clear, but states in lighter blue or pink are leaning toward Biden or Trump, respectively. Any one state will give Biden the win. Trump needs a combination of states just to hang on. So, facing tough odds, Donald Trump has once again addressed the nation, stating multiple falsehoods and saying he's being robbed of a second term. The Trump campaign has launched legal action claiming fraud, trying to stop the count in some states. State election officials say there is zero evidence of wrongdoing, wrongdoing. To the contrary, they say counting is proceeding smoothly across the country. Here's, what some, here's some of what the president had to say. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. If you count the votes that came in late, we're looking at them very strongly. But a lot of votes came. A reporter, Amian Esif, is in Washington and following all of this. He joins us now. Amian, we just heard President Trump there talking about illegal votes and claiming that the election has been stolen from him. How are those comments going down in America? Well, of course, Trump's supporters, those who voted for him, are looking at his chances of a second term slipping away in front of their eyes, and they're reinvigorated by his claims that he's going to be able to challenge uh, the election results, that there's a reason for him to uh, fight this in courts. But it's interesting to see the reaction from the rest of the country, from the majority who voted against Donald Trump, but also from the media. Three major networks cut away from some of those comments he was making, uh, reminding their audience that these were baseless claims that jeopardized the electoral process. So uh, even Fox News, which is a uh, major media network that is very favorable to Donald Trump very often, has repeated that there are no, uh, there's no um, base for these 
claims that the election is being stolen from here. So a very divided reaction uh, to these claims that he's making. Now, I understand that election protests are being reported in a number of places in the U.S. I um, mean, can you tell us more about what those demonstrations are about? That's exactly right. They're about these comments that Trump has made. So a lot of uh, his supporters have gone to places like in Arizona where they're counting ballots to protest that uh, they need to count continue to count the ballots because there in Arizona, Trump is gaining an advantage from these uh, votes that are just being counted now, so absentee ballots um, and, and things like that. Whereas in uh, Michigan, where uh, Biden was declared the winner, uh, they're going, they have gone to polling places and demand that the count be called off. Um, but on the other side, Biden supporters um, or just people who are worried about Trump's comments about not accepting the results are taking to the streets and demanding that every vote should be counted, that we we do this election like we've done it every year, that we count all the ballots, absentee, mail-in, uh, everything like that, until we have a final result and then determine a winner of the presidency. Okay, so we've heard from President Trump. Uh, one thing he did say that is definitely true is that uh, the office of president is very important. Uh, another man wanting to become president, of course, Joe Biden. He's been speaking. Let's listen to what he had to say. Democracy is sometimes messy. It sometimes requires a little patience as well. But that patience has been rewarded now for more than 240 years with a system of governance that's been the envy of the world. And we continue to feel, Senator and I, we continue to feel very good about where things stand. We have no doubt that when the count is finished, Senator Harris and I will be declared the winners. So I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. The count is being completed. And uh, we'll know very soon. So Joe Biden there saying he's on track to win, sounding optimistic. Uh, I mean, when will we know who's actually won? What state should we be watching out for over the next few hours? Well, uh, Georgia is one that is promising to have its um, votes done very soon. Over 90, about 99 percent of the votes have been counted there, and it's down to a margin of under 2,000 votes at this point. So very close, and that would uh, would be a state uh, that either Biden could flip for the Democrats or Trump could secure uh, for himself. Um, so we're watching uh, Georgia right now, and that's going to be coming in next. Pennsylvania has most of its ballots counted, but uh, in the other states, Pennsylvania, uh, Nevada, Arizona, uh, the electoral officials are saying everybody has to be patient that they're not going to announce any results until all the votes have been counted because the margins are so close. So those are the states that are going to be we're going to watch right now. Pennsylvania, of course, in Trump's favor. But as more votes are being counted, that could flip toward Biden. And that's one of the main reasons why Biden is optimistic, because if he wins Pennsylvania, he wins the presidency. Very exciting indeed. Uh, DW's Amin Esif there in Washington. Thank you very much. Peter Roledal is also following this, of course, very closely. He's with me in the studio to take a closer look at some of those claims that President Trump has been making. Uh, let's first listen in to more of what the president had to say. I challenge Joe and every Democrat to clarify that they only want legal votes because they talk about votes, and I think they should use the word legal, legal votes. We want every legal vote counted, and I want every legal vote counted. We want openness and transparency, no secret count rooms, no mystery ballots, no illegal votes being cast after Election Day. You have Election Day, and the laws are very strong on that. You have an Election Day, and they don't want votes cast after Election Day, and they want the process to be an honest one. It's so important. We want an honest election, we want an honest count, and we want honest people working back there because it's a very important job. So that's the way this country is going to win. That's the way the United States will win. And we think we will win the election very easily. We think there's going to be a lot of litigation because we have so much evidence, so much proof, and it's going to end up perhaps at the highest court in the land. We'll see. Donald Trump there casting doubt on the legitimacy of mail-in ballots, calling it a corrupt system, talking about secret count rooms. Extraordinary from a U.S. president. Uh, what are we to make of these claims? 
You know, if I could be honest with you, Terry, I, I, I kind of wish I knew where a lot of this was coming from. I mean, I think there, there are no secret count rooms. Uh, both parties have observers during the elections. Uh, the Trump ad, uh, campaign has said also in, in Pennsylvania, for instance, that they would like uh, observers during the tabulation process. The state has agreed to that in theory, but warned that it might slow down the process. You know, we're... These claims of mystery ballots, of illegal votes, officials and and um, observers have, have both said that this election has been remarkably smooth, despite taking place in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, reports of regularities have been absolutely minimal, and the mistakes that have come up have largely been corrected quite swiftly. Um, you know, we're looking at an election that's seen the highest turnout in over a century. Uh, as I said, it's taken place in the middle of a pandemic, which has forced a lot of states to, uh, you know, come up with different ways to try to make this process a bit more smoother. For instance, relying more on, and also, f first of all, obviously, to have people stay safe during this pandemic. So it is taking longer because we are looking at an immense backlog of mail-in votes. Um, so... There's nothing unusual about any of the, the, the things that we've been seeing these past days. I, I think what's probably truer is that we're looking at, a, at an incumbent president who currently has a very, very narrow path to victory, much more narrow than Joe Biden at this stage, it looks like, and who's essentially making up, you know, trumped up allegations to maybe stay faced and to cast doubt on the integrity of a perfectly fair democratic process. Well, this is what I'd like to talk about, the process, the, because uh, President Trump, you can understand if he's, he's afraid he's going to lose, he's, he's getting a bit desperate, but the things he's saying cast doubt on the entire American electoral system. He's saying it's corrupt. Right. He's essentially accusing the American electoral process of being unfair and corrupt. What, does the, what sort of message does that give to the American people and to the other people in the Republican Party? Can they sign off on that? Well, we've seen some uh, Republicans starting to distance themselves. The, the governor of uh, Maryland, for instance, Larry Hogan, um, coming out yesterday saying that Trump needs to stop casting doubt on this. I mean, keep in mind, this is not just about Trump. We're looking at a lot of, of Republican states right now. We're looking at Senate races. We're looking at local races. Um, does that mean that all those election results are illegitimate as well? Um, the Republicans have overperformed in Congress. Does that mean that we need recounts there as well, that those, those votes no longer uh, matter? Uh, I don't think Trump would agree to that. So, I mean, where does this leave us? It leaves us in a, in a process where an immensely chaotic process. We're looking at absolutely essential that whoever comes out victorious of this process is considered a legitimate presidency. Trump is currently doing everything in his power to undermine that le legitimacy. And keep in mind, he could still win. Does that sure. make him an illegitimate president? <laughs> um, Remarkable questions. Absolutely. Ahead. DW's Peter Lerledal, thank you very much for your analysis, Peter. Now, to Germany, where police are carrying out raids in connection with Monday's terror attack in the Austrian capital, Vienna. The 20-year-old assailant was shot dead by police after killing four people. According to the German Federal Prosecutor's Office, homes in several locations here are being combed for possible evidence and ties to extremist circles. In Vienna on Thursday, imams and religious teachers of the Austrian Islamic community met at one of the locations of the attack. Together with leaders of more than seven religions, they held a commemoration ceremony for the victims. Well, for more on that, I'm joined now by our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow, here in Berlin. Thomas, what more can you tell us? Are people in Germany suspected of involvement in the Vienna attack? Not direct involvement. That's at least according to German authorities. What they have said is that they are basically looking for evidence here in Germany in three locations, in Osnabrück, in Kassel, in Pinneberg. And what authorities have said is that they do not think that the people involved had direct in involvement in the attack in Vienna. What they're trying to find out is possible links to the alleged perpetrator 
in Austria. So we're talking here about four people in particular, two of whom uh, were apparently in Vienna with the man in July and two further people who he apparently met online. Uh, there were no arrests here in Germany. And again, the key element was to try and find evidence during these raids. This does not come as a surprise. Uh, Terry, actually, Interior Minister Horst Seehofer had said yesterday during a debate in the German parliament that there were suspected links between the alleged perpetrator in Austria and uh, people here in, in Germany. So I think that responds to the investigations that German authorities have been doing hand in hand with their Austrian counterparts. What about Germany itself, Thomas? How high is the current terror risk here? Because we have seen attacks in the recent past. It is high, and that is something that Interior Minister Horst Seehofer also stressed yesterday in uh, Parliament. When asked about it, he referred to 615 potential perpetrators here in Germany. And he also stressed that you cannot understand, you cannot explain what is happening, for example, in Austria or what happened in France only from, an, only from a national perspective. This is something that has to be dealt with internationally. And that's why he also focused on that specific element of international cooperation and in particular cooperation within European countries as well. What about the two arrests that have already been made in Switzerland in connection with that attack in Vienna? What more can you tell us about that? Well, it is exactly related to what I'm just stressing, this idea that this can, cannot be understood only as a specific element in Austria. And yes, indeed, there were two arrests in, in Switzerland earlier in the week, and that is part of the investigations that are being carried out, in particular by Austrian investigators, but as we see now also from, by investigators in Switzerland and also here in Germany as well. Thomas, thank you very much. That's our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow.